morning guys welcome to today's video Great. come on stop you don't want to be taller than me i'm like literally the tallest woman i'm five nine and three quarters i'm probably about five nine now actually and sophie's probably five eight we wanted to show you our baby chicken start out this vlog as papa <laughs> showing you them because they are pretty darn cute She's getting, he's getting so sweet. <laughs> oh. Anyway, this is them. Hold on, wait. They have more room in here. I just don't ever, oops. I never move this thing all the way to the back because sometimes they get stuck back there. Anyway, this is them. I got the baba. Show them our favorite. This is everybody's favorite. Even Gabby's, she doesn't like chickens. Even Gabby's and she doesn't like chickens, but isn't it freaking adorable? It's yeah, penguin. Face. So cute. Like the cutest little face. And newsflash, Molly loves the chickens. You're probably thinking Molly wants to eat the chickens, but she... Oh, Pablo. That one, we should name that one Ellie, because that's, that's Ellie. <laughs> Ellie climbs underneath me when I sit down and she I pushes, see you, pushes you off balance. Anyway, Molly sits here and she licks them. She just quietly licks them over and over. And Molly's not an Free affectionate Molly. dog. Okay, this is one of the ones that has a dot. Ellie, stop. Yeah, so these ones are like twins. So show them. This one you can see it better. Okay, so they both have a dot on their face on the opposite side. So see that one's got a white dot right there. And then this one's got a white dot right there. Opposite side oh, dots. And they both have a dot farther down. Yeah. They're, they're twins. They're dot and dot. Uh, you should name them dot and dot. Yeah, but this is the one that's probably a rooster because we are starting to really like him because he's always like, pick me up, pick me up. Anyway, I wanted to just explain about our chickens just a little tiny bit because some people are confused. You would not believe how many times I get the question, why do you have chickens in your house? Like, I get it from a lot of people. A lot of people have chickens in their house, you guys. They keep them in their laundry room or they keep them in their garage or they keep them someplace sheltered from the elements. Don't bite that. Because it's so cold for babies. Hey, Ellie, don't bite that. I mean, Molly, don't bite that. She's really excited. I don't know. She is Almost really excited. The sweetest one. So, anyways, we brought them in because it's really, really cold outside. Once they get a little bit bigger, they'll be able to manage. This yeah. is the boy. Look at how cute the feathers are, though. And then this one's the girl. You can tell because she's way smaller. But I don't think small has anything to do with it. Well, the hens are smaller. You see? So, anyways, we choose to put them in here for the time being. But anybody who raises chickens usually ends up having them in their house or someplace sheltered until it gets warm. In fact, a lot of people won't breed winter chickens because of the heat source. They need a heat source. And not everybody has a heat source in their chicken coop. <laughs> Are you my mother? Do you guys remember that book? Are you my mother? My boys loved that book when they were little. Anyways, this so... This one really looks like a black copper ram. Yeah. That one for sure is going to lay dark brown eggs. No, because this one wants a hatch. And I was holding it, it just sat there and stared at me like, what are you? Ellie's excited to go out and Molly's excited to go out, so let's go out. Hey, Molly can hardly, Ellie can hardly even contain herself. Sophie made good on her promise. She is wearing boots today. <laughs> Rolling in the dog poop. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I am not wearing Crocs anymore after today because they're literally way too slippery in the in the oh, snow. Yeah, look at those chickens. So that's the difference between our baby chickens and these chickens. Ours are friendly. Ours are friendly, but they're not like free run in with their mom and the reason that they don't have a mom is because she's mean and she won't take them back chickens lay eggs and leave them they don't just hang around and raise babies every once in a while when their body temperature gets to a certain degree and I, I, it it's powered by all these different mechanisms 
a chicken will go broody and not all chickens go broody. So it usually is up to one chicken or two chickens of the whole flock to raise up all the babies. So anyways, good morning and welcome to today's video. Sadly, get in, get in, get in. Sadly, I've been keeping the chickens locked in the, in the, in the coop. They're like, what? <laughs> I am opening this little tiny door here and then they go out there. chicken right here has gone broody which that means she wants to raise up some eggs but she's not a good mom <laughs> or we messed it up so that she's not a good mom we made some mistakes if you just left her alone in her own area to raise eggs she probably could but she killed the chicken the last time we let her try and raise eggs so we don't let her <laughs> where's my eggs she says go out they're like, we don't want to go out there. We want to go across the road. Literally yesterday when I came out in the morning, I knew it was time to lock them. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Sophie. Me a snowman. What is that? A snowman. Yep, so there's Sophie's snowman. He's great. He's great. These gloves from the dollar store are <gasps> the best. Your your snowman is head deep. Go get him. Deheaded. Anyway, I'm even able to keep this door closed so it keeps like heat in there. Yesterday I was walking out to let the chickens out yesterday morning. And just as I was walking, I saw them in my eye in my I saw them in my mind across the street being picked off by like some kind of creature. So I just knew yesterday was the day to to keep them locked up. I don't know if that's what other people do, but I'm going to keep them locked up for the winter. Let them out again when it gets warmer. Some people like the snow. <laughs> Our dogs like the snow. I started today off extra early and gave Ellie her bath because she got into somebody's food this morning, last night. And I woke up this morning with a chicken ball in bed with me. I think Gabby ate her dinner and left her plate in the living room and Ellie went downstairs in the night and got into that food. And then I woke up in the night smelling chicken balls. Like I could smell this food. I'm like, what the heck? I rolled over and rolled over on a chicken ball. Sam and Sophie are always done before me because it seriously takes me forever to feed the goats because I have to take special considerations. I have to make sure that the boy goat, come on, doesn't get the girl grain. And then I have to make sure that they let the baby girl eat her grain. Oh, there she is. So I have to stand guard. So it's nobody, I hide her gate grain and I hide her some hay. She knows where it is, but she's holding her own. It is definitely the hardest thing, bringing like a new goat into a goat herd. Harder than with horses, I believe. I don't know, maybe not because horses are more expensive. So you tend to worry more about them. If a horse gets hurt, it's going to cost a lot more money than if a goat gets hurt. But but in saying that, goats are really expensive too. Like they need stuff all the time. They need shots all the time. They need like, they need more than go than horses in some ways. But she is a strong little girl. That's what I love about her. She's literally so strong. Ellie, you climb. Don't climb. Ah. Ugh. Don't climb. We don't climb. See, she knows to run when people are being mean to her. And when I say people, this is for Katie. When I say people, I use it synonymous with animals and people. I mean, everybody. Is there actually a word that encompasses all of God's creatures? People, animals, aliens, whatever it be, whatever it may be. Anyway, before we really get into to today's video, I wanted to tell you guys about 
my irrational fear. I don't even know if it's so irrational, but I need help with this. This is something that I've like been struggling with. And I don't know. I have post-traumatic stress disorder in buying horses. Stop being mean to your baby. So I'm afraid. I'm afraid to buy a horse. I'm afraid. Like Gabby has one that she really, really likes. And I'm afraid to like buy it. I'm afraid to buy it at a busy time of the year because it's Christmas and there's just so much that goes in, into buying a horse, like the all the checks and the, the vet stuff. And then the fact that there's snow on the ground and we don't have an outdoor arena, where will we keep it and all that kind of stuff. But also, so my biggest fear is that whenever you buy a horse, if it doesn't want to do the things that you want to do, it always ends up with issues. Like, you always end up with issues. I'm still so stunned about Chino. Like, I don't know. We bought Chino and pretty much had problems with him almost right away. First, we were trying to build him up his weight. Once we got his weight up, then he ended up having problems with his feet. And then it's like we couldn't feed that horse. But he was such a good horse and we wanted so much from him and we expected him to be so much and then he just wasn't. And that's the problem, like, unless, like, Elizabeth's horse, the horse that she bought, is so motivated to jump and to go. Like, he loved it. He has his tongue hanging out of his mouth and he's just, he is an athlete and like, gets off on it. Like, that's what he wants to do. He sees Elizabeth coming and he's like, let's go! But, the kind of horses that we always buy are the more like gentle, more soft, more, oh here comes Sophie, more beginner safe kind of horses and it's not been our experiences, it's not been our experience. So when you buy a horse that isn't really into it, it just seems like you're fighting an uphill battle all the time and it's so hard to know like if the horse that you buy is going to want to do what you want to do. like. And the other thing is that horses are expensive, they're hard to keep, and sometimes when sellers express how the horse is, you, they're saying one thing and you're hearing something different. Like it's really hard to decode what people actually mean. It's really difficult. Horse people use language to sell a horse that literally is meant to just, I don't know. I don't know like I don't know how to explain it any better hopefully I wish I could speak better honestly because so many people are gonna misinterpret what I'm saying but I have so much anxiety about buying a horse so much anxiety because I want the girls to like be happy and be doing what they want to do but when we buy a horse that doesn't want to do what they want to do and I end up seeing that it feels unhappy doing what they want to do like storm with the jumping it makes me sad for the horse I don't know, it's hard to buy a horse and we have a lot of help. We definitely have a lot of help, but because there's so much of a discrepancy between how horse people speak, it's hard to know really what you're getting, even with a vet check. Hello to our favorite horse. <laughs> wow, that's a fancy blanket. I love blankets with necks. It's a lightweight. They have their Black Friday sales. We're at the dump store and they have, you can make that? No. Oh. So they have this sale on where it's like a bucket sale. So you can call them, tell them what size you want. It's $100 for a bag sale. It's a bag sale, $100 bag sale. And you get um, like so much more product than a hundred dollars. All right, why are we down here? I want a saddle pad. I want to look at saddle pads. You don't even have a horse. I say we put a halt on saddle pads until you get a horse. Look how cute this is. Wow. Minnie, let me even show you. Yeah, it's so, so cute. Let's go upstairs and look at the stuff that you actually want on your list. Oh, Let's look at blankets. That's nice. Oh yeah, it's like they have one here though. Size. That is probably Willow size. No, that's way too big. That's Gracie size. No, that is not Gracie size. Yes, it is. I bet you, but I'm not buying a white blanket. Oh, 
kitty. Honey, she actually I, needs a new one. Look at this one. That's oh, too small. I actually love that Honey doesn't have a blanket. I feel like with Honey, it's we can bring her in blanket. if it gets too cold because... What size does Honey need? A 30? No, she needs like a 40. 40? 50, 52. What size does Willow need? Probably a 56 or 58. We're not getting white. If anybody does need a blanket, though, it is Willow. Nice, feel this. It's a nice yeah, thing. it's nice. So the only reason that we... So minis can grow their own fur. Like, they're good at that. And they can stay warm. The only reason we ever blanketed Willow is because we found her shivering a few times. 52, 53? We don't know their size. Oh, it's dumb of us. They even have a $5 clearance bucket. What the heck is that? Underneath riding breeches... That's cool. Keep you warm. Are we allowed to open them to see what size they are? No. Things that Sophie wanted for Christmas, they didn't have in. You have to order them, and I don't know if they'll be in here in time for Christmas. So she basically wanted more supplies for her pony. Do you guys remember that a pony that was so expensive that she got that stuffed Lemieux pony? That it's cheaper she got. now. Is it? Yeah, it's of like course. Three hundred dollars, and not three fifty. Oh well. Anyway, she wanted like jump boots and um, other stuff that go with it, but they don't have any in stock. So. Then, I don't know about the blanket. I have to figure out what size Willow is. She definitely needs another blanket. I don't want a white blanket though, for obvious reasons. As long as it doesn't get muddy at our place, which it probably won't. I'm surprised that she has a rip in her blanket. It has to have been Storm or Penny. Penny. Uh, Penny. Was it Penny? Yeah, Penny's been attacking Gracie. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get something for her. I should go back in there.